Good morning and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Deacon Donna and I and the whole congregation are happy to worship with you today. A bulletin for this service can be found in a link in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on or in an email from the church. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord, not to be anxious about earthly things, but to love things heavenly. And even now, while we are placed among things that are passing away, to hold fast to those that shall endure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for today is from Proverbs chapter 31, verses 10 through 31. A capable wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. The heart of her husband trusts in her, and he will have no lack of gain. She does him good and not harm all the days of her life. She seeks wool and flax and works with willing hands. She is like the ships of the merchant. She brings her food from far away. She rises while it is still night and provides food for her household and tasks for her servant girls. She considers a field and buys it. With the fruit of her hands, she plants a vineyard. She girds herself with strength and makes her arms strong. She perceives that her merchandise is profitable. Her lamp does not go out at night. She puts her hands to the distaff, and her hands hold the spindle. She opens her hands to the poor and reaches out her hands to the needy. She is not afraid for her household when it snows, for all her household are clothed in crimson. She makes herself coverings. Her clothing is fine linen and purple. Her husband is known in the city gates, taking his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchant with sashes. Strength and dignity are her clothing, and she laughs at the time to come. She opens her mouth with wisdom, and the teaching of kindness is on her tongue. She looks well to the ways of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children rise up and call her happy, her husband too, and he praises her. Many women have done excellently, but you surpass them all. 
Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Give her a share in the fruit of her hands and let her works praise her in the city gates. The word of the Lord. The psalm for today is Psalm 1. Happy are they who have not walked in the counsel of the wicked, nor lingered in the way of sinners, nor sat in the seats of the scornful. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on his law day and night. They are like trees planted by streams of water, bearing fruit in due season with leaves that do not wither. Everything they do shall prosper. It is not so with the wicked. They are like chaff which the wind blows away. Therefore, the wicked shall not stand upright when judgment comes, nor the sinner in the counsel of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked is doomed. The epistle for today comes from James, portions of chapter 3 and 4. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life that your works are done with gentleness born of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For where there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy, and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. Those conflicts and disputes among you, where do they come from? Do they not come from your cravings that are at war within you? You want something and do not have it, so you commit murder. And you covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. You do not have because you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him, and three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, 
Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. As you may know, our youngest son was married last weekend. Everything and everyone were beautiful and lovely and enjoyable. Anne and I could not be happier. Our son found his bride by taking out an ad in the Salt Lake City newspaper. These are the qualities and virtues that he listed. She will manufacture cloth and sew clothing of such quality that her family will look like royalty and she will stay up all night making extra clothing to sell for a profit. She will go far away and find good food, carry it home, and cook it. She will buy fertile land and plant a vineyard all by herself. She will give to the poor. With great skill, she will manage her household staff. And she must be happy, kind, trustworthy, and wise as she eagerly looks to the future. Perhaps our son had unreasonable expectations. Now, you may have caught on. I fibbed a little about the newspaper ad. In all seriousness, this passage from Proverbs contained the advice of a queen mother to a prince who might well have needed it. She pointed out that charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. Charm is deceitful and beauty is vain. These no doubt were the only qualities that the young prince had been seeking. The overall message to the prince might have been to find a completely competent partner who will exceed in every aspect of their shared life, which does sound like good advice. But when I read this, I thought of the Stepford Wives, and I wondered if it made married people snicker. Whatever our expectations for our spouses, we would instantly recognize this list as unrealistic. I believe that unrealistic or unfair expectations generate much of the conflict in our relationships. For example, and this is a true story, I got a call from a friend a week after his wedding. He was distressed because his bride said, this marriage isn't working. I inquired about the problem. It was toothpaste. One of them had expected that, when married, they would both use the same brand of toothpaste. Fearing that I would burst out laughing, I referred them to their priest for wise counsel. They worked it out, along with a thousand other things, and are approaching their 27th anniversary. Here is another example. A woman expected to save her new husband from alcoholism. She knew that she could change him and that they would live happily ever after. We can imagine how that turned out. Jesus' 12 disciples argued about which one of them was the greatest. That meant that if one was the greatest, then 11 would be inferior and inappropriate expectations would lead to inappropriate relationships. They simply reflected their society. Someone was always greater, and others were always inferior. It was expected. Jesus turned that upside down. He took a little child in his arms, someone who had no social status or economic utility, and said, whoever wants to be first must be last of all and a servant of all. He equated himself with the child, saying, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me and the one who sent me. He was teaching them and us about a right relationship with God. The queen mother of Proverbs had further advised the prince, a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Another way of saying, seek a wife who is in right relationship with God, 
because such a person will be a blessing to you and to the community. But what does that phrase mean? A woman who fears the Lord. What is the fear of the Lord? I look to the beginning of Proverbs, where we are told that fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Rather than fear in the horror movie sense, here fear means reverence. And without reverence, we cannot know the Lord. Without reverence, we really cannot know the important people in our lives. And so right relationships and realistic expectations are impossible without reverence. The rest of that line from the beginning of Proverbs is this. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. So, do not marry a fool. A fool is someone who lacks reverence. That is the teaching of Proverbs. Jesus taught that we are in right relationship with others when we adjust our expectations of ourselves. That is, we don't have expectations for others. Rather, each of us has an expectation only for his or her own self. I must expect to be the servant. I must expect to be the last. And if I warmly welcome people whom society judges to be of low status, people who are of no use to me, then I will welcome Jesus and the Father, and I will be in right relationship with everyone, myself, other people, and God. In short, I am to have reverence for everyone, absolutely everyone. What would our relationships be like if each of us expected of ourselves only to be a servant to others? Or if we had reverence for everyone? What would our church be like? Our city? Our country? I think it is a reasonable expectation for each of us. And perhaps some really good advice. Amen.
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people are Form 3, found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 387. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons, for Michael, our presiding bishop, our presiding bishop-elect, Sean Rowe, Diane, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially Trinity Episcopal Church in Lebanon. That they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially those affected by violence and natural disasters, especially Bonnie Matthews, Clay Glenn, Greg Delgado, Greg Penland, and also Adam, Richard Bateman, the Reverend Barbara Beam, Al and Mary Buford, Jim Bertram, Sherry Candio, Carter, Brandon Chand, Kathleen Clark, Mark Connolly, Abby Zarr, Dana, Debbie Dribben, Doug, John Dunn, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Father Harry Firth, Dorothy Gregory, Alex and Susan Green, Virginia Higgins, Jim, Ed Joyner Jr., Karen Joyner, Lachlan, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Brian London, Leo, Patricia McGlaris, Tyler and Tara Colleen Markham, Gabe Markham, Larry and Rita Martin, Dave Masden, John Matthews, Lori McLaughlin, Tom Miles, Marcia Miller, Billy Montgomery, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, Wendy Ramp and family, William W. Ritchie and family, Tom, Carly and Theo Roberton, Judith Rojas, Scott, Britta Segan, Dick Strong, the Tubbs family, Carolyn Watson, Don White, Miriam White, Jimmy Wright, Paul and Carl Yaley, Zay, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our needs and those of others. For those serving in the military and their family, especially Mason Roselle, Lyle Otterson, Lauren Batson, Alex Battle, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Lucianne Larea, Sean Perrone, Shaz Porter, Dan Sanford, and for those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries this week, especially Peter Kardash, Chelsea and Joe Barbercheck, 
John Van Haften, Roxanne Troxelli, and Abby Zarr. And now let us pray as our Savior Christ hath taught us, saying, Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass, trespass against us. us. And, and lead us not us into temptation, temptation but, but deliver us from evil. evil. For thine is the kingdom, kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, glory forever, forever and ever. And ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.